Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. Dylan here. We have a bombshell from Lawrence Jones, one of the biggest up and coming uh, hosts on Fox News. He's the youngest black co-host in cable news at 30 years old. He just came out and exposed the truth about Kamala Harris, about the left, and he's also going full MAGA, all right? He is vocally coming out to support Donald J. Trump, and also revealing the truth about what's really going on in this country, all right? He is here to bring you guys the latest. We're going to bring him on the show, but before we do, we're going to read the Bible because God comes first. Amen? Comment amen down below if you believe that. Today's Bible reading is Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. Now, let's get started. Let's bring on Lair Lawrence Jones to expose the truth. All right, here we go. This is Lawrence Jones saying that the Democrats never expected this. Let's tune in. Uh, the Wall Street Journal, uh, Jerry Baker, our friend who works upstairs here, he has written a thought-provoking uh, column. It's uh, titled, Barack Obama and the Democrats' Politics of Contempt. And essentially what it says is if you're thinking about how the mainstream media uh, is essentially is saying, hey, if you're thinking about voting for Donald Trump, it's either because you're bad or because you're stupid. It's contemptible. Well, we saw what Barack Obama said to black men saying that, oh, hey, if you're not voting for Kamala because she's a woman, then you need to rethink your choices. He was telling them that it's not acceptable if they don't vote for Kamala. So this is what a portion of the article says. Is it impossible, for example, that black men may think Mr. Trump would do a better job for the economy than another Democratic administration? Or Isn't this just the whole rehash of Joe Biden saying that, well, if you vote Trump, you ain't, you ain't black. Like, that was weird. That was really, really weird. Or that the Democrats' denial that sex is a biological reality is a serious threat to both the nation's values and science, or that Hispanics might want a candidate who has a record and a promise of imposing a tough immigration policy that will keep the country safer. The democratic self-ordained mission to make better humans of us all is not only tiresomely elitist, it's also of dubious political value. If you have such a low opinion of voters, they may end up having a low opinion of you. Mm -hmm. So one thing that I've discovered uh, from the Democrats about doing these barbershops and talking with uh, voters of different parties, but of course, in the barbershop, you got some Trump voters as well, which it's, it's, it's new because there's never been a Republican on the ticket in modern day time to get so much support from black men. And one thing that I discovered from the Harris voters that still remain with black males, they never expected that when they changed the ticket, because Joe Biden was doing bad with black males as well compared to other Democrats. But they thought by having a black woman on the ticket that mm. they would pressure some black males to vote based on that. And the black males have completely rejected that policy position. Wow. Who would have known that people don't base their choice off of race? <laughs> wow. Who would have thought? They haven't seen anything from Kamala Harris that inspires them. They don't trust her. And the second issue is she hasn't given an answer of substance on why she hasn't put policies in right now to fix the economy. And whether you love or hate Donald Trump, a lot of black voters, specifically black males, feel like the economy was better under him. And they haven't provided a response to that. I think there's so much to this. Number one, if you, I think that uh, fundamentally Trump is the first to this, and I think in future cycles will be there. I think people uh, are tired of being sexualized. I want this is for black men, this is for black women, this is for Hispanic men, this is for Hispanic women, this is for women, this is for men. I Why are we still segregating people based off of race? Why are we discriminating people based off gender? I don't understand it. Aren't we beyond that? I think these, uh, most of all, they're Americans. They want an opportunity. Uh, they want an opportunity to be successful. They want an opportunity to go to school. They don't need to smoke pot for free. They don't need special loans. They need an equal playing field. And make it equal. Don't tell me I need special uh, special services. And please don't think I'm naive enough to know when you're pandering. You have three weeks to get an election. We all see the numbers. And you go, give them loans. Give them pot. 
uh, give them special housing discounts, and they'll vote for me. That's America. They, they can see through it. That is how politics not have worked for weeks a from. long time. But then, now listen, you could tell pandering from a program. These are individual here's, panderings for a here's, program. Here's what Donald Trump has going for him. We saw what it was like under four years, uh, under his administration. Yeah. We saw what it was like under Kamala Harris. He had remained in Mexico. If you sought asylum, if you're an illegal and you say, I need to leave my country and come to America, he said, you have to wait in Mexico until you're hearing, and then we'll decide. Then Kamala Harris and Joe Biden come in and they do away with remain in Mexico immediately. Four different uh, most, border rules. Exactly. Right? Most everyone. I forgot they got rid of Trump's best deal, which was the remain in Mexico. Why? Oh yeah, just come to America while we process your application. That's a freaking brilliant idea, bozos. Body can just walk across, declare asylum. Once you're in, you're in. Once your feet hit American soil, you're in. You don't even have to show up for your for your hearing. You could be a criminal and you're in. Yeah. And we've seen that. And then now they're trying to blame it on the border bill that Trump didn't sign. Guess what? That border bill came out this year. Kamala Harris was. In, they were in office. In Let's hear you, Lawrence. I know you got something good to say. Let's hear you. Democrats said no. The to problem what with said. the pandering, though. Here we go, Lawrence. This is my guy. I like Lawrence. To Stephen Bryant's point. It, um, is, is that the pandering misses the mark. You want to put marijuana on the table, uh, but people can't afford groceries, okay? Right. So, so I mean, uh, putting weed on the table yeah, when people are trying to... Hungry. Yeah, it, it just doesn't make sense. Right. And this just says this is going to give uh, loans to black businesses, but then you're going to put more taxes and more regulations right. exactly. on those sure. same they black businesses. Corporate taxes. Right. Yeah, so and the more you smoke, the hungrier you're going to get. But the food prices that keep it rising. The, the, the policies that she's throwing out there as red meat to try to attract right. us misses the mark yeah, every well, single time. Too, but he, here's the thing, and this goes to my point with uh, Brian, and that is American politics. It's how it's worked forever. I remember when my kids were in grade school and when they were, you know, the kids who were running for class president, they would say, you know what? We're going to get Harry Potter, J.K. Rowling to come to our school. We're going to have candy every day at noon after lunch. Those kids always won. J.K. Rowling never came to the school and they never got candy. But it's just one of those things people do in politics. Yeah, they pro over, over promise, under, under deliver. Let's listen to Lawrence. White people like Coors beer? I mean, what are you trying to do? Well, I, I think, I think there's a large demographic of Americans that are smoking weed today. Yeah. I, I don't, I, I don't think that's an agenda for black America. I think that's an agenda for a lot of people. But the thing is, people can't afford basic items now. Being able to buy weed because it's legal in a lot of states yeah. is a luxury right now. Yeah. Look, I don't smoke. I rarely drink. But if even if I wanted to smoke, I wouldn't because of the finances. I don't want to spend or waste money on it. I don't have a desire to do it anyway, even if it were free. But again, I don't want to spend money on it. Now, Lawrence Jones, he's absolutely incredible. He actually went down um, to the hurricane uh, sites. I don't know if you guys have seen this, but he went down to actually... Uh, you know, on the ground to, to take a look at the hurricane damage. So I really like Lawrence Jones. You know, he's got tattoos all over his arms. He's just a cool guy. And he went down to actually, you know, help this situation. Let's tune in. North Carolina with a first-hand look of the destruction. Lawrence. Hey, good morning, family. And just to show you the scene here, um, the best way I can describe it is if you picture a war zone in a movie, well, that's what this community is facing right now. I want you to look at this guy. This used to be a car. That's a Ford Fusion. I can barely recognize it. That's crazy. Repair center right here. And you see this car that has been devastated right here. You look inside of the building. There's other cars that are in there that are just pinned down. Holy the crap. Other location right here is a mattress uh, location. Over 200 people die in this Hurricane Helene. Um, there's nothing there. We have to literally go to Google Map to figure out exactly what, what it was. On the other side is a service station, completely hit as well. And the people are coming together right now, private organizations pitching in. But there's a lot of questions about where is the federal government? They say they're here, but the people feel a different way. We yeah, and then Kamala Harris, lion Kamala, as Trump calls her, 
is, oh, Ron DeSantis isn't picking up my phone calls. Ron DeSantis, pick up, buddy. I've been trying to call you. Ron is like, bro, it's not your job. To them yesterday, this is what they had to say, watch. We never thought it would hit up here in these mountains like this. But when we walked down and seen that road gone and that bridge gone, I mean, it took my breath. I was like, what happened? Lots of disaster in this area, a lot dead, a lot with that power and water. We don't know when the water will be restored. Where's Joe Biden? Where's Lion Kamala? Where? Lawrence is down there to, to get the truth out there. That's why I like this man. He doesn't only go down um, to the hurricane, but look at this. Lawrence Jones went down to interview Donald J. Trump. Look at this. And he says Trump is the first Republican candidate to go to black community in 50 years. Let's tune in, guys. This is epic. I, I got to tell you, I left hopeful. And the reason why is I've been telling people for the last 10 years, Republicans. It was at a historic Bronx event. Lawrence Jones teaming up with Trump, guys. This is huge, massive, massive team up here, guys. Go to the black community, go to the Hispanic community. You may be surprised. They're culturally conservative. They want change in their community. They're not lazy. They want better for their children. Just go talk to them. And Donald Trump is the first presidential candidate, pres former president to go there in 50 plus years, I have the opportunity to talk with him. This is what he had to say. Why do they like you better than any other Republican in modern time? Well, you have to ask the other Republican. I mean, I'm just saying, you see black support going up with you, Hispanic, yeah. young people. Like I said, the people well, are more like me than you, and, and they say you're different. Why? Because I did things in office that nobody else has done. Criminal justice reform. For, I did criminal justice reform at a level that nobody thought was possible to get. And I did that largely for the black and Hispanic community. That There's people of all types types of uh, backgrounds, ethnicities, who they really, really like Trump. I myself, I'm Hispanic. I have family members who have come in here from Mexico, and guess what? A lot of my family members, you know, we're Mexican-Americans. You know, we've been in California for 13 generations. We're actually California true Mexicans, so I got Mexican blood in me. I also have family members who have come in here from Mexico. A lot, most of us all love Trump. <laughs> so, I mean, it's like, yeah, no, I don't want Kamala, like, what, because she has a dad in Jamaica? It's like, who cares? What does that have to do with anything? The ones that wanted it, uh, Opportunity Zones with Tim Scott. It's like, oh, Kamala Harris has a Jamaican dad, so yeah, she really understands people. It's like, give me a break. And he was so much in favor of it, and it's probably maybe the best economic development package ever for African Americans, for Hispanic Americans, Asian Americans. We did a lot of things that people couldn't believe we were able to get done. Nikki Haley said today that she's going to vote for you. Um, it looks like the Republican Party is coming together. <laughs> yeah, I think it is coming together. I think it's come together for a long time. You have to understand, we did the nomination process the fastest in history. You know, if somebody else were running, they'd still be running for another month in order to get the nomination. We did it two months ago. I believe. The party is together. I appreciate what she said. The party is together, and I think we're going to have a tremendous... We saw it early in the diners. I would go yeah. to the diners and they said they were very funny. We wanted Trump because yeah. of the Trump economy, the border being secured. Is this going to be a regular election? You say that there has to be undisputed win at this time. Well, I won't forget you at the diner because when somebody else would blurt out, well, Nikki's doing well, or Ron's doing well, or somebody else, and you'd say, that's not what I'm seeing out here, and then you'd go and it was all Trump. Quickly, I'll say this before I turn it over. Wow, what an epic interview. See you guys. The original speech was supposed to be about 45 minutes. He ended up being like two hours long was, because he was he genuinely was enjoying the moment with those folks in the Bronx. Yeah, and he uh, covered a lot. He started the speech by talking about all that he's done for the community in the Bronx. He's a New Yorker, which I think is important because, yeah, he is famous. He's a former president. Before that, he was a billionaire uh, and 
you know, New York City icon. But he went there not as any of those things. He went there as a New Yorker, and I like that he showed his New York pride. And then he Trump is a man of the people. People keep on forgetting, and especially Democrats and libs, they forget that Trump is a man of the people. He relates to everyday people because he goes and talks and hangs out with them, and he speaks to them like on the same level as them. And it's absolutely beautiful to see. He ended his speech in a non-political way, although he injected some politics into it, although he said he wasn't going to be political, with just advice for young people. Mm -hmm. And it was a, a ride, the ups and downs, and he covered all of the issues. And I would be interested to see, not just about race of the crowd or how many people are there, but how many Democrats are in that crowd as well how many disaffected democrats are there that whose mind he might have changed with that speech i'm steve juicy i'm brian kill wow what an epic epic uh you know interview rally by trump now here's lawrence reacting to trump after the attempt on his life let's tune in guys so when i got the news that former president trump had been shot i had just finished doing jujitsu shower took a nap two minutes from getting it up and my phone just starts going off. Like, did you hear, did you hear, have you talked to him, have you talked to him? I'm like, no, no, what, what, what's going on? Turn the TV on Fox, of course, and I'm seeing all of the reports, and it's horrific. And of course, at that moment, you worry about the man, not that he's the former president or the election coming up, you're like, is, is he okay? Yep. Um, so I started talking to my friends, my, you know, members of the family to confirm they hadn't talked to him as well. And then I had to put on the reporter hat. It was time to get on air and start reporting on what we knew. So crazy experience. Talked to him the day after the shooting. And his first question to me was, how are you? And I responded to him. I said, I should be asking you the same thing. And he just wanted the audience to know, all his supporters, the country to know that he loved them. And I think that truly tells you about the man is that in the moment that he was shot, he was concerned about the country. Yep, 100% guys, 100%. Fox and Friends host, Joan, Lawrence Jones, blast Kamala Harris's concealment of Biden's health status. He went after hard after Kamala Harris, watch this. This so is what's happening, right? David Marcus puts it, let's say, on the beat. To roll through the select. Okay. These, they have long trails. Those, those streets, North Carolina, these are like the small town. We can make the, the best decision or not. Lawrence Jones says, Vance made the case of what a MAGA movement is, a worthy successor for the movement. I'm talking about J.D. Vance here, guys. They were just trying to set expectations low. I low. He was clearly nervous yesterday. You had a J.D. Vance that really prosecuted the case of what a, a MAGA movement is. Maybe Donald Trump always goes into the pictures and all that. Well, you had J.D. Vance that colored within the lines, and I think you see a worthy successor for the movement last night. He was likable, relatable, complimentary of the governor as well. And this whole notion that J.D. Vance is more experienced, he's been in politics for two years. Yeah. Okay. Right, yep. You got a sitting governor two terms that was in the uh, Congress for over Which is a decade, why he could talk and he about was not prepared. There, there were two uh, that is funny. Yeah. That's absolutely hilarious. Lawrence Jones. Coming out strong. You know, I really like Lawrence Jones. He's uh, He goes and speaks to people. He actually did an episode where he went into a barbershop to speak to, First of all, to guys in the barbershop. Did you guys see this? This is epic. The DNC is here in Chicago. How do y'all feel about that? This is a really interesting discussion. We're going to find out, you know, after this convention, how the American people feel about their pocketbooks. Let me tell you, it was like being back at home. And I... I credit the barbershop with making me someone that can do TV because you debate, you got to defend your issues, they'll laugh at you, go back and forth with you. But it was interesting because you would think that I was in Idaho somewhere or South Dakota and a diner because they're saying the same things that all of those people are saying, which is the economy is bad right now, inflation is killing us, and the border is a huge issue yeah. for the men that I spoke with. And it's very insulting for them to be struggling and working hard, and then you decide that you're just gonna give benefits to people that didn't come to the country the right way. Um, 
I think they are the secret weapon in this election. Blackmail, whoever can disrupt that will win. If Donald Trump gets 30% of the black male's support, the election is over. Whoa, that's massive, guys. Absolutely massive. So big kudos to Lawrence Jones for teaming up with Trump, guys. He's going MAGA hard. Let me know your thoughts down below and say a prayer for Lawrence Jones. Bye now.